G'day, how you going? Are you Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel where I teach beginners how to paint. And today I wanna to paint a country road scene going up a bit of a crest down and then up the hill into the distance, all right? The size is on the canvas there. And I'll also get some colors running up the screen for you as well. Now this is gonna be a few different color subjects here, but my main objective in this tutorial is to try and find the real color values within a painting so when someone looks at it they're not only going to look at a good painting they're going to look at it and go i like that it's great it's going to be impacting to them when they see it and everyone else that walks in your house so get on over here and we'll get right into it now i've done a bit of a layout with me pencil here i've got just under halfway for the horizon line and the opening in the distance of the highway is about this much and it's going to come down up and over so what i've done to create that illusion is from about here i've gone and made a big arch like this and then you use your artistic license and sort of join things up and we'll make sense of this throughout the tutorial i'm going to have some trees and mountain and some sun setting down here so on the palette, we've got some craft white and I want to mix some of this with retarder. The retarder is a product that'll slow down the drying time of acrylic paints. Because if you've just started painting in acrylics, you'll realize, my goodness, they can dry quite quick. So this is just going to prime in the sky area. So I want to get, let's say the sky area primed up with this craft paint. Craft paint is just soft bodied acrylic paint it's a softer body it's not as thick and as textured and i just call it craft paint people call it student paint whatever whatever but this is going to help our sky colors flow across your dry wanting canvas now just stroking it left and right like a pure gentleman like that to get all the creases out of it and we'll put the sky colors in there now i want to mix up the sky color i want it sort of a warm color so i want to get the Permanent alinzarin and the, I'm using cerulean blue just to make up this purpley colour here and I want to grey it up as well. So I've got some mid-tone grey from a tube and I want to try and find the right vibe colour there. I needed a bit more bluer than that. A bit more red in there and once I feel I've got this colour, I've got it mixed ready to go. It's a little bit How's that? A bit more grey won't hurt. A bit of mixing here. I want to try and find the real dawning colours of the sky. Okay, I've got that mixed. Now I want to grab, I'm just grabbing a flat brush here and I want to grab some Indian yellow and get the setting of the sky down the horizon area. So I've got my mountains there, so I want to bring this right from about here and just have a glow. So I'm pushing that into the white and having a glow right across, right across, even though your mountains are there, don't try and follow it. Just keep everything in a um, horizontal manner and I'll kind of glare that out there like that. That'll do. Blend it into that white. See how that white has made your paints work great. Now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more on the tip of the brush and if you want, you can add some Look at that, those lines there. That's just an idea. I'll probably get rid of them, but I'm just showing you what you can do. Now this paint we mixed up here. I've got it on the big putter on a brush. And we'll get our sky pushed to that yellow. Get it right on there. And then stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman. Look at that. Crisscross it if it's not quite getting there, there we go. Now we want to crisscross it. I'm going to the tip of my putter on a brush now and I want to merge that just in with that Indian yellow just to get a nice transition of the two colours across the horizon line. Stroke it, pull it, control your art piece. There we go. Now I've cleaned my putter on a brush because I want to get some deep orange or red gold some sort of ready warm colour to put in the sky. And I want to concentrate right across here and join into that bit there. Pull it through just like that. It's 
raining outside. I don't know if you can hear it. And I might get a bit of a warm glow up in here as well. Just softly push it into that violety sky color we got there. And then the same with this. Getting it right into that yellow there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pick up my fan brush and just stamp on some white. Probably where I feel the joining bits are, like this, just from the orange to the purpley sort of color there, in there like that. Now I've just wiped my putter on a brush. These aren't gonna be clouds. I'm just gonna use this to try and weld the two colors together. So I've done all that blending with the putter on a brush. Now I wanna get this and just kind of create my own glaring substance within those colors, softening it down, x-stroking it, pulling it across. And I might even get, if we can, let's say a little bit of glare where my mountain's going to be. Let's see if that's gonna work or not. So we're pulling that into the yellow there, along there. We've softened up those colours. Now, if anything, in my brush strokes, you can see I've kept them long. That creates distance within your skies, I feel. Now, grabbing your blue, cerulean blue, and some of the permanent alindrant, I want to create the distant mountain colour. So I'm going to mix this up. And I want to get that blue faded distant mountain range in the distance there. Okay, I've got that mixed to a purpley blue color and I wanna come along. So this line we put here, that's the, pretty much the crest within the painting. And we wanna bring this, let's bring our mountain shape up. Just come along and make your mountain shape the way you want. Come up here. See, and then I'll come back here and brush it like that. So you've got the brush strokes here the way you want them. Now I'm going to grab some of this craft white over here next to that. And I want to make a lighter value of that paint. All right. So just with what's in the brush and what I picked, picked up with the craft white, I'm just mixing there a lighter value. Now I'll bring this one back in front of it, but I want this sort of coming up on its own as well from here and then scooting down, caressing that sunset or that dawning sun. Good thing about acrylics, I can dry this and continue. So we've got that. Now I can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can see bits of yellow underneath that. So I'm going to probably dry it and give it a few more coats. Because if it, while it's wet, it's just gonna keep lifting it and lifting it and give you frustrations. So I've dried that, now I'll sit this one back. I'll sit that one back from here and I'll grab some of this darker color. Now I'm bringing it over here. So I've got some of this still mixed in the brush because I want some different values within it, lighter and darker values, and this will sort of help create that to happen. So we'll get this like it's having its second coat and we're going to drop it down and bring it in front like that. This is just minute detailing within the mountain range there. It'll kind of look all right, hopefully. Now we can add a little bit more lighter to that. So I'm picking up this first lighter value we mixed. Say from about here, start from the bottom. See, it's quite thick. Get your brush worn away and just let it blend up. I'm dabbing it because if I rub it, it's going to rip the living buggery out of it. And you don't want to rip the buggery out of your painting. Just adding distance between you and it. Dabbing it, wipe the buggery off that. And there we go. Okay, next colour I want to use is the Burnt Umber. I'm picking it up on my putter on a brush and I want to block in the whole bottom half of the painting minus the road. So we've got our, let's 
get this pretty much across there. All right, I've done that and I've dried it. Now we're gonna bring everything from the back slowly coming forward. We're gonna have bits of little trees in here because we're gonna have other stuff in front, but some of that stuff that might be seen, we're gonna do that right now. So it's right in the painting there. Now I've got a very small filbert and just some dark paint here, which is perylene green. I've mixed up some of that permanent alinsarin with it so as I can get the distance within those little trees at the bottom of this mountain range here. So they're probably pretty much going to come there like that. Bring it down to that brown roughly where, now see I'm putting little bits of air in between this and the mountain behind just to give it a sense of depth. Don't put too much red in that dark green. Um, Otherwise it'll go brown. There we go, we're popping along here. Make sure where it's joining onto this brown it's solid. Because these are just going to be little distant gap fills within the depth of your painting. Now everything's going to be working down from itself. So see, this is cutting that back and the next subject I paint is going to cut these subjects back. Just along here, that'll do. Now grabbing the Indian yellow you already have on your palette, grab some of that and start mixing into that to create, it's gonna be a mixture between green and the dead wood color you get and depth. So we're mixing that up into that color there. Get the tops of these and just kind of find the tops and leave the depth within them down there, leaving, darkness at the bottom where that hill crest is because it is a hill crest there just like that just dance along that row of dark color you put in there and i'm finding a filbert helps you create the shapes of tree canopy shapes Now I'm grabbing some more Indian yellow and mixing into that pile. I don't know what colour you call that. Cucky green. Yucky poo green. Baby poo green. Meaning some nice lights and darks. Try and imagine how your bushes are looking What's behind? This is just very little background, but my goodness, it doesn't take much effort to put this sort of work in a painting because like I've said in previous videos, most of our paintings are gonna outlive us and the people next generations to see them are gonna appreciate the extra time and work you put into them. All right, the next color I've got is raw sienna dark here and I wanna create the lighter dead grass on the side of the road. This is going to go over the burnt umber. The burnt umber is going to create the depth within this. If you want, which I might do, I'll just put a bit of that in there, a bit of white just to marble it up a bit. Marbling is like you can still see the lines within it. It's not a hundred percent mix like I did to that pile there. So you, we can just call that marble mixing that up. I'm using a flat brush because you know, we're probably only going to see this bit here. There's going to be foreground trees there. But I want to scratch this in and see the darkness under those trees now. Now I want to set them back with this. This is the actual ground we're going to see up there. Boom. Just do it like nature intended. Boom. Come right across there. And now I want to create the field here. Now all this burnt umber, like I said, is going to create it. Now from this hump, there's going to be a distinct other value here, right? It's about there. And the same on this side here. There's a dip in the land. 
So this is going to be pretty much one value. Get from that line there, you're going to come up and across, up and across, bit of a down bit there. And we want to create all this dead, this, you get this a lot in Australia, dead grass colour. Get that all the way along there to that, at least that point there. Just chisel the brush as you load it and we're controlling what we put on the canvas. Come from there and pull it through. Way up there, in case there's some gaps in the trees peeking through, you'll see that. And if you're enjoying yourself, take time to stop and whack your kettle on and enjoy the moment and treasure it. Because every time you look at a painting that you've done, you can look back at it and remember the great times you had doing it. Now I'm picking up some of the craft white, mixing it with that down here. See there, so we've got a different value. Get a little bit more. The soft titanium white. And I want to kind of create a bit more luster. Get that sharp against your trees there. Leaving that colour you, you just put on there, leaving a lot of that there. We might have to, I haven't dried it because I want it to kind of blend, scrumble together. And it's just not so bland, it's adding value and depth to your painting. Boom. Scratch it in. Now we want to put that colour here but, but to distinguish the difference we just want to make this line that we made a bit darker so we can grab some of the burn umber say and some of the raw sienna dark just there like that so it's a little bit of a darker value my line there's my line that can just kind of fade out fade out Fade out there, something like that. And the same on this side. I haven't dried nothing, it's still kind of wet. There we go, fade it out. And it's always a matter of adding the lights and darks back and forward until you're happy with the composition that you've created. All right. So there we go, that's kind of darkened that up. I'm happy with that. Now we'll grab this colour again. Which is down here, the raw sea and the dark. And we're going to map in the front part now. So caress that dark bit back, sink it back. This is going to have lighter stuff on it as well. So just, you've got the burn umber under there. You're, you're getting this colour now and you're creating the shape of your side of the road there. This is all like dead grass. I'm not worried about going into the white bit because I'm going to sink that road back on top of everything here, so that's why I haven't mapped that in yet. And get this all mapped in here. Get it right over to the road's edge because we can create our edge with the road. We're going to have little bits of greenery within this, but not too much. Now, given that a light dry, we've got to put these trees in. But before we do that, like I said, we've got to work from the back to the front. So this line I had over the road, we're going to put this bit of the road in now because we're going to put these trees in as well. And they need to be hanging over the road. So I've got me, let's grab a pole over here. I've got me mid-tone grey for the road. And we'll add a little bit of black as we go. Always add the darker colour to the lighter colour pile so you can control and we want to get our road mapped in. That's pretty much all right for now. I want to get the road right against there, like that. Now, we're only going to come to that bump, which was down here. I'll draw it in there. Just so those who aren't aware will see where I'm going. And we're going to bring this 
down there. And then we can put lighter and darker values in it. Get that. You can go a bit lower than the line you need to, that way you can always bring the other one to it. Now I've got some black and I've added to that grey colour because I want to create a bit more darker along the edge of the road here just to create that vibe where are we coming around there you can probably use a different brush I haven't dried nothing because I don't care if it mixes with that grey a little bit Now that small filbert that I used before, I've loaded up this darker colour and I want to create, let's say, some band of shadows coming across the road. Because these make for realism in a painting. We always forget our shadows a lot. Mainly across this crest where it's going to have that line. You can dry your painting if you feel. We've got some shadows across the road. So when we've got the trees hovering over it, it's going to make sense and it's going to make people go, I like that. Before we get too far, I better put the lines in. So I've just grabbed the littlest bit of white tinted with grey. Just a little bit so it's not pure white. Oh, I'll try and get these reasonable. Perimeter line on the edge of the road. Turn the brush as you go. Double white line. There we go. Now we can put the trees in on, over, over this because it would have been hell trying to paint this once the trees are done. Okay, I've finished that. I'm just grabbing some of that darker grey back again, just so these shadow lines can sort of hover over that white line there as well. Now you'll notice this front bit here, I've mapped that in, but I haven't highlighted it yet because as you can see, we're making our painting go up down and then back up. So we're going to paint the trees in here and then when we highlight this we're going to sink them back the way we sunk those distant trees back. So I'm going for a, a decent size, appropriate size filbert and I'm going to simply just grab the perylene green, dark green. And where we go, well, I want some dis distance between the trees and the road, the side of the road there. These are going to come up control the tops of these you don't want it too dark up there there's the road right so I want these trees to kind of come sort of into the middle of the road there blocking so you don't have to see where the road went to now there's a tree there we're pretty much going to do something here get some windows in it meaning gaps so you could see there. And this tree here is pretty much going to start blocking the background in, but leaving between the side of the road and this tree some gap to make it look believable, but they're coming from this point here. They're popping out, you got that gap there. So you can see in between there, it's great. And then these trees are pretty much going to come all the way. Let's, let me put the tops in so you'll know. They're going to come here, a bit up there, a bit there. I'm getting the tops in. And see that sky there? I want some radiating right above that sky there. Oh yeah, look at that. Like that. You can do it, just a bit of practice. Coming along that crest that we made and getting, I can turn the brush to get the, I want to, that's where I want some trees there. I'll turn the brush on its edge like that. That'll give me a guidance of the bottom's all dark 
and then they're going to start umbrella shaping up to the tops of the trees and you've got some field windows in there. The highlights is going to distinguish the shape of your trees. Get used to mapping in a dark spot and making the shape with highlights. It'll help you throughout your art journey immensely. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I want to go from about that, where's that crest? There it is there. So we're going to start these trees, leaving a gap between the road and, and it. Come in there. I'm showing you this bit because I want to get that gap in between the edge of the road there like that. And these are probably come out here down there sort of coming in front of the edge there fill that in a bit have some windows in there so see all that bit we've done looking at this painting in real life you can see it and I do want something just hovering over the road there there we go so let me finish this off okay I've done that I've kept it nice and dark to that line that I put there before remember because that's distinguishing where this road's going. It's going to keep everything in perspective. This one here is going to bring the next bit forward. That's why you need to work out those lines. So I've got me perylene green here. Now I'm going to add some cadmium yellow to get our tree colour. So I'll start on this side with Malcolm, my mouse stick, and this tree here. Watch what we do. Where are we? I want it lightly hit the tops and create over that darkness. Pick up some more. Always conditioning my brushes on picking up more. Uh, where is it? It's coming here so I want to get it over the road there like so. Now you might have to change brushes. Get it past the black. Don't leave the black on the edge. Get it beyond it. All right. Now that tree there, we're going to put another one in front of it now. So we're coming forward. So I'm going to leave a little bit of dark there between this and that. And this is coming down. And then when we add highlights on top of this again, big blob on my brush, it'll distinguish what's in front, what's, what's forward, okay? I'll highlight these. Go beyond the black. See that black there? Go a bit beyond it and come down within it. You don't want to leave the black at the top of it like that. And leaving your windows as well. Now I'm going to make some shapes here. I want to make a, another tree type here. Try not to get any stampy patterns. And up here, look at this. Let's Highlight some of that. Leave some dark there on that one, and then just simply bring this one right in front of it. Boom, boom, boom. Now I want to get this one done as well, so let's try and get him all billowing and buffling where he's got to go. Bits there, right beyond the black. Billowing and buffling. Like pillows of cloud, I'm doing pillows of uh, the green. So this bit that you can come from there and out onto the road there. And see, that's why I did the road first, because it would have been hell trying to paint the road within this tree. finishing this side. Now we're going to make what trees are in front and behind 
doing it my way. See what's in my brush? That's plenty. And you mix that with your cadmium yellow. That'll be our highlight. So if you tried putting that with that, it's just gonna be too much and you'll be end up putting that whole pile in there plus more. Now you can see the difference. Just keep pulling it in until you're happy with it. Don't feel, oh, am I doing it the right amount or not? You'll learn as you go through your journey. And when you look at your paintings, you'll think, oh yeah, I could have went a bit more lighter or darker, or I did well there. So let's start with this bugger on the left of the road there. You'll see, look, that's a bit hard. This one's in front now, coming down. Very little. I've got to take more off the brush. There's too much on the brush. Getting the very tops tinkled in by heading. Coming down there, all the way down there. That's looking like light hitting the side of the trees. You get on the highways here in Australia. Now it was inspired by this painting from an image I saw on Unsplash and I'll give credit to Photo Logic. they put the photo up and it's very, I don't know where the photo was taking or anything like that but it's very similar to what we get in Australia, that's why I liked it. I'm changing it a little bit but um, uh, where are we, we want some little bits of light tinkling down in front of that dark bit there and I'm going to do this just periodically now around not over all that green that I put on the lighter color green I put on before this is just less again so we're creating the different chunks and bodies of tree and foliage everywhere and when we set this back with our foreground on the ground there, it's going to look really magic on this side. I want an, a forward uh, tree somewhere here. Little bits of light hitting there just to create its shape. It's very easy to get carried away and go over everything, but see like here I want to set that distant stuff in the background back so I'll bring this brighter in front of that there create a shape there that's just a bit brighter let it blend down to nothing at the bottom there there we go okay now I want to grab more yellow and mix with that again and this is going to be even more gingerly spread meaning not as much i've got a lot of paint there that i still might have to come back to so i'll give it a friendly squirt just to keep it damp and wet i want something Gingerly setting all this back. I'm looking in my monitor so I can get an idea. This bit here I'll just put some more highlights there to make that one more forward than the others, what I intended it to do. Some of it down the bottom there. Just so it's different colour, maybe a little bit radiating from here a bit, not too much, a bit there. Okay I've done enough highlighting there, now this road where we got this we're going to push it back, so come to where you want to push it back, cross there. And the same on the other side, you're pushing the bottom of that back because it's down the crest a little bit. It's down the crest a little bit. So that's why we're making it a sharp edge because it's down. 
try and create the shape that you want. And when we highlight this bottom half as well, it's going to look like the land is doing what you wanted it to do. Now going back to this colour, we'll grab some more of that craft white. And we want to make that dead, it's sort of like a dead wheat colour I suppose. And we're going to mix this up with the brush and then highlight that foreground. If nothing's dry, um, let's see how we can go now. We're going to... Scratch it in there, it's coming down, there we go, you can come into the road like that and then start getting, I'm going to get the brush on its edge like this and see if I can make some beautiful long strokes that sort of keep the depth within my ground. I'm going to use the brush, see that's why I haven't done the road yet because I'm able to continue my brush strokes. Let me have a look at that. And that is creating the colour that I'm after. Straight into the road. If anything, it's coming down into the road. There's a bit of a ditch there. A bit of a... You create the shape of your land. Beautiful. Look at that. Get rid of any deliberate weird looking brush strokes. You want it to try and look like nature. Same here. You're pushing that back. Oh, yes. Come in there, load your brush up. Now this is going to have a bit of minted green in it as well, just to show some colour there. And then the road will set it off. Pretty easy, isn't it, eh? These videos are designed to follow them bit by bit. Play and pause, practice and paint, play and pause, practice and paint. I've given this a dry and I'm grabbing some of this colour here. I dried it so this will stick on there and I want to get some just some subtle grass growing on the edges here. So where are we? We'll start about here and we'll just scoot it into there like that. Coming off the road into that darker area there. Now maybe this is the right colour, maybe it isn't, but we'll see anyway once the road's on. I'm, I'm tearing it into the ground side. I don't want a solid side from that side, I want to tear it into it. Go a bit long, it's different, different stuff over this side. A bit more of it over this side because the sun hits it more. Now back down here we've got that grey we mix for the road. So I want to grab some of that. I'll, actually, it's getting a bit dry there, so I'll pull it over here. And add a little bit of black just to get the value that we want. And well, now we're going to map in the bottom half of the road. I wanted a little bit of water just to give it a, a right amount of ink consistency. So first off, I want to find my crest in the road. So I'm going to come from here and I want to do it in a nice sweeping action. So we're coming up here, around there, continue to the edge there. There we go. And with a bit of luck, that's going to make the hill in the road, the crest. Okay, we've got that mapped in. Now, I've given that a light dry. That colour we want a little bit darker now, so grab some more and make, we're going to make pretty much the edges and marks within the road a bit darker. Be careful with this because it dries a lot darker, the greys. And I want to come somewhere from here. Did I dry it enough? I don't think I did. 
just getting some road get these strokes going into that point there coming there Pretty much stroking it like that so it looks like the road's going into the painting. Up to there somewhere. Don't want it that dark. Some of that back, see I'm softening that dark bit back. There we go. Now I'm grabbing just the pure grey, the mid-tone grey, because this crest here, I want to kind of get that highlighted. There we go, and we can have some lighter bits within the road there. The problem is here where I've got the brush now, it's wet still. I've got to dry it, so I'm just going to dab it like this. There we go. And we can probably have some lighter values in the road here and up here somewhere. I'll fix that darker spot up because I feel I've, I've lost it. Hang on, that looks a bit crooked there. Roads are pretty easy, see? See how I've sort of made bits happen and other bits have sort of been lost. So I'll grab the other value grey and like I'll put that back. Put it, put it back, see? All right, I've given that a bit of a dry. I'm grabbing the pure white on my script liner and I want to grab, let's say from about that point to that point, that's going to be me double white line. All right. So with the magic of TV, I'll make them look better. There you go. I want to darken up in there because it's important. Bit of black and the perylene green. I'm just grabbing it on my script liner there. I want it scratchy dark. I'll grab Malcolm, my mouse stick. And we're going to come... I'll grab it a bit more. I'll make it a bit more greyer. So I've just wiggled it into some dirt, into some white there. And I want to, well not that grey though. And I want to just lightly get this from the trees where all the dark bits are. Just so it doesn't look like it's floating out there. And then just pull it down the side of the road there. Like so. And that's kind of, I can go a little bit darker, just a little bit. And I'll gingerly put the white back, those lines back. Okay, so I'll grab the white again with the grey in it. It's really grey white. And I'm just gingerly, gingerly going over those lines again, just so as they, there we go, they look a bit real. Now, it's up to you what you want to do if you ride here. You know, I might even put some skid marks on that. Who knows? But you can do anything you want. I want to put a little fence here. Now, I want to, because it's, it's looking a bit naked. So well, I'm just grabbed some burn umber with black in it. And we'll probably go from about, I don't know, here. So I want this one coming up there like that. Okay. And me lines about there the top of me thing so I'll put one about here somewhere a bit closer there 
get it to the ground. I'm just using a script liner here, and it can be broken up because these are old, shacky, broken. Uh, what do you call it? From there, somewhere here. Old timber tree stumpy bits made to look like, you know, how they do in the country, the old fence posts, and you can have them all bent, whatever you want. Let's put something there. Some all the way down here, like so. Coming. About from there, getting a bit fatter as you go. That's the paint there I had, the burnt humber and the black. I've just grabbed some white. I'll have it marbly because you don't want them too, too loud. Now they are a bit wet still. I don't want it to clash with the background colour, it sort of is. Get a bit of a light hitting them. Get them down there. Just don't worry about detailing the distant ones. I'll put a couple of shadows in them. So the best way to do your shadow, the colour you use for the post, just simply grab that and grey it. And that'll shadow. Let's get this going on the ground like that, hopefully. You don't want it too grey. And we've got the shadows from those trees going across there, so we might as well make these the same. Get it a bit more airy. Touch the bottom of your thing and then just kind of give it a shadow whatever way the land's going. See, like that. And the simple grey within the colour you use is a, is a good enough shadow colour. And hopefully, I'm going to have a look in the monitor in a minute. Yeah, they look shadowy. And this side here, whoa, up the hill a bit, you dag. Up the hill a bit. That's up a hill. I've just got the subtlest bit of white mixed with that paint. And I'm just putting some light hitting the top of these posts as well. Just along the side of the road here, I've grabbed the darkest value of grey I can find, but I want it dry in my brush. I've done a little bit there, it was a bit wet, and I want it just scrumbling in a scratchy, opened edged, darker value, just along there. Dark and airy. It's creating some depth within the edge of the road. Just the last thing I will do with the height of these, I was just what looking, I might put some sense of shadow out here. So all that colour I had there, I'm picking that up, which was here, which was that perillion green, and we're going to grey that to a shadow colour. Get a shadow colour of that casting across. So I want to sort of imagine this shadow coming here on the ground there, so to speak. I'll kind of just lightly cast it. Because that's what shadows do, they cast, don't they? I suppose. Leaving some air in the middle of them and trying to get it to follow the shape of the land. And this will probably give it a sense of more realism as well. There we go. There we go. The shadows make a difference. All right, let's sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. Now be sure to check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe if it's your first time here. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. month. Much appreciated.
Okay, we'll whack a frame on this. There you go, that's not too shabby, is it? These colours are complementing each other there. We've got that highway and we've created the illusion. It's got a crest going up into the distance there and it's just a different sort of sky instead of a blue sky. And with a bit of practice, you can do it. Well, beautiful subject, simple highway, and like I said, with some practice, you can achieve that, okay? Be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing on my channel here, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.